Well, I believe the power to make a difference can be found in this box. <laughs> Would you like to know what's in the box? Yes. Yes. Would you like to know what's in the box? Yes. Of course. Well, let's have a look. So the power to make a difference can be found in this. Isn't that the mother and father of all bacon sandwiches? <laughs> and when I look at that, other than wanting to bite it, I think, how could such a simple thing make such a big difference? So let me tell you the story. I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky that I get to work all over the world with amazing organizations and amazing people who want to be brilliant, who want to raise their games. And I often start a presentation by asking this question, who do you consider to be brilliant? And when you ask that question, all sorts of names get shouted out. And the classic ones that people would always talk about would be people who've changed the lives of thousands of people, people who've invented things, those who have been known as great creators, great thinkers, people who've written books that have influenced the world, of course, the great computer experts, the great musicians, and people who have thrown themselves from the side of space just recently. Wow. And all of those people are brilliant, and all those people are well-known, and that's why we talk about them. But I want to talk to you about Jenny. And this lovely young girl, she came up to me and she said, I want to make a difference in this organization, and I think I know how I can do it. And I think I can do it by teaching the salespeople to fill their forms in properly. Because we get many sales that don't go through because they haven't taken a credit card number correctly. They haven't got the postcode right. There's lots of reasons why. I said, well, you go for it. She said, I'm going to. And a few months later, I caught up with her and asked her how it had gone. And she said it was interesting because I knew what had to happen so that we could get more sales. So I talked to the sales director and I said to him, I would like to have half an hour with your sales guys. That's all it will take. And I will teach them how to fill in their forms so brilliantly that we will get more sales and we'll make more money. And as a sales director would, do you know what he said to her? No. You see, I get two hours with these guys, and during those two hours, I want to teach them my stuff. So, well, what time do you start? I said, we start at 9 o'clock in the morning. She said, if I could get them there for 8.30, could I have half an hour with them? She said, they're sales people. The idea of getting them there half an hour early, she said, if I can, can I have that half an hour? No problem. So she sent out an invitation. It was a handwritten invitation to each person in a nice envelope with a live stamp. And the invitation read, turn up at 8.30, one week on Monday for the sales meeting, turn up half an hour early at 8.30 and I will teach you how to increase your income. And at the bottom she wrote, free bacon sandwich. 8.30, <laughs> they were all there and they all asked the same question. Do you know what it was? Where's the bacon sandwich? She couldn't let them down, so she bought 20 bacon sandwiches, and as they were chomping through them, she actually told them how to fill in the forms properly so that they would actually make sure that they didn't make mistakes. It was a nice idea, and it worked for one month. But these are salespeople, and they forget things very, very swiftly. So it wasn't long before the forms went back to the old way. And at that point, couldn't she have given up? She's 18 years old. She's the assistant to the assistant to the assistant. She's way down the food chain, but she said no. Can I have them again? And the sales director said, you know what they're going to ask for. She says, I'm prepared to buy the bacon sandwiches if I can have them for half an hour. But I also want to talk to this big guy, big Scottish guy called Hamish. And Hamish had worked for the company for 20 years. And she talked to Hamish beforehand and said, I need your help. You see, last year, you guys missed your bonus a bonus which for you, Hamish, would have been worth £2,000 because three people didn't fill their forms in properly. And I wonder if you wouldn't mind just expressing to the rest of the group, to your colleagues, how that might make you feel. He said, I'm happy to do that. No problem at all. So she did her presentation again, and then she got Hamish to come and stand up and said, Hamish, just tell me, how does it make you feel to know that you lost out on £2,000? Three of your colleagues just didn't fill the forms in properly. And he said, as only a big Scottish guy could... If I find out that any one of ye hasn't filled in a form properly, I'll tear off your head and shit down your neck. <laughs> it wasn't exactly what she was expecting, but it got results. 
Nobody wanted to have Hamish doing that. <laughs> And the point was, she realized she could make a difference. She realized she could make a difference with a bacon sandwich and the leverage of Big Hamish. And why not? And I think so often we talk about these grand schemes and these grand people who do amazing things, when actually sometimes it's the simplest of things that make a difference. How many people here would like to fly with Captain Denny? Bless you. Some of you are putting your hands up. You don't even know who he is. What a kind... <laughs> Well, he could be a stunt pilot for all you know. <laughs> Captain Denny is a pilot with United Airlines. He's a lovely, lovely guy. And when I started to research Captain Denny, I found out a few things about him. The first thing I realized was this. He's a senior pilot. If he wants to, his job could be this. He could just rock up at that airline. He could do his pre-flight safety, jump in the front of the plane, wait till everybody's on, take off. In fact, usually the next guy, the co-pilot's going to take off. Then he would do his pre-flight announcement or his in-flight announcement. And you know how it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, we're flying at 38,000 feet. The weather where we were is pretty much like the weather where we're going. Enjoy your flight, autopilot. But he doesn't do that. See, Captain Denny cares about people more than anybody who I know. Captain Denny gets there early. He gets there early so he can do his pre-flight safety as quickly as possible, so he can go to the gate and meet as many of his passengers as possible at the gate. And he'll talk to them about where they're going and what they're doing and why they're traveling. How many people here have ever met the pilot at the gate? Right. One or two people, that's all. It just doesn't happen. Then he greets everybody as they come on the plane. He can say good morning, good afternoon, good evening in about 18 different languages. He kneels down to greet kids. He helps people put their bags up. This guy is a senior pilot. Then when he gets into the front of the plane, he does his announcement. And when the autopilot goes on, he takes out his notes and he starts to write notes. Every single person in first class and business class gets a handwritten note. You know why? Because 80% of the profits come from those two cabins. So they all get a handwritten note. He also checks his manifest. If anybody is flying with a live animal, he knows. And if he's on one of the big planes, you know what he can do? He can go down and check the animal to see if it's okay. So imagine this, you're flying 17 hours and you're taking your little cat and it's in the hold. What are you thinking? What are you thinking for 17 hours? Exactly. Will the cat be frozen solid at the other end? <laughs> Is it going to be a cat popsicle? What am I going to get at the other end? So Captain Denny goes down, he finds the cat. Pss, 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 pss. It comes up to the front, he takes his digital camera out and snap. Then he'll go upstairs and he'll find Mrs. Thompson in row 32D. And he'll say, Mrs. Thompson, I know you're traveling with your cat. Oh, I'm just so worried. I'm just so worried. She's down there. I'm up here. I don't know. He says, don't worry. I've just been to see her. There she is right now. Oh, let me ask you the question. Who wants to fly with Captain Denny now? Yeah, we all want to fly with Captain Denny, but it gets better than that. See, Captain Denny also knows that the people who sit in the middle seat, solo travelers in the middle seat, the main reason why they do that is they haven't got a clue about flying. Because everybody who flies on a regular basis knows you want a window seat or an aisle seat. Nobody wants the middle seat. So what Captain Dane is, is he writes a handwritten note to those people. And he said an amazing thing happens. When that handwritten note is delivered to those people in that middle seat, two things occur. Emotionally, their seat just became that little bit bigger. Because they got a letter from the captain. He said, but also, physically, their seat just becomes a little bit bigger because the experienced flyers either side go, what's that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and once you've got that elbow space, you're not going to let go. <laughs> Captain Denny has become one of those people who I love to talk about because everything he does is completely within the realms of what we can do. You can't perform like Lady Gaga. You might think you can, but you have to be drunk to be that good. <laughs> we don't invent things the way that an Edison might, but we could. But you know what? Are we able to? Can we do this? Can we do that? 
You're not a Richard Branson. You're not a Steve Jobs. We could be, I know. I'm a motivational speaker. That's my job, to tell people you can do that. But you know what's more important? Forget about that middle seat. And think about what it means to you in your work, in your life, in what you do. Forget about the fact that it's a little cat and he took a picture. Forget about the bacon sandwich and think about what your version of that might be. Because I really do believe this, that the future of work, the real power to make a difference is this. It's not about one person making a massive difference. It's about masses of people making a difference. Thank you.